on the loop. That'll get your heart racing. And look, no hands or paws. It's an oil slick. Backyard signs to the rescue in Operation Cleanup. Can Joseph avoid a messy situation himself? And how to tell the difference between diet and regular soda. Yuck, that's going to squirt everywhere. But remember, this is Backyard Science. The show that loves getting messy. Maybe not with sticky coal. First up though, Lucas thinks today's going to be plain sailing. But one little slipper. Oh, sailing, I love it. Out on the water with my boat. My brother better not be spilling that oil of his around my fish. Oh, he's right now. Oh. Huh? Oh, the cooking oil. Oh, nice one, hot shot and oil bar. Oh, look what he's done. We've got to figure out a way of cleaning up this water. Otherwise, my goldfish will die. Die, we're going to die. Don't panic. I'm going to go out there and punch him in the field. Look at it. It's floating in gunky globs on the surface. Cleaning up, this is going to be a nightmare. We need to find something that'll soak it up. I wonder if Dad's got anything in his shed. Yeah, well, hurry up, get a move on. Oil and water don't mix. When there's a spill, it can be a disaster for the environment. One of the worst happened in 1989, when a tanker called Exxon Valdez ran aground in Alaska. It spilled more than 11 million gallons of oil. It's estimated more than 250,000 birds and billions of fish were killed. Terrible, huh? It can take years for plants and animals to bounce back from something like that. Now Joseph has a new trick, but it looks like it might be headed for a messy end. Check out this balancing act. Hope Mum doesn't notice I've borrowed her eggs. It's going well. Oh, man. Yuck! I've got to find a way to avoid this. How about I put one egg in a glass of water and the other in vinegar? Just let them soak for a few hours. When you come back, the egg and the water is the same. But look at the egg and the vinegar. It's fizzing. There's a chemical reaction going on. The acid in the vinegar is reacting with the egg's shell. Now, let's have another try. Oops. No problem. The vinegar has turned the egg into a bouncing ball. Now I can practice all I like and never have to clean up. Everyone knows what a huge splash you can make when you dive bomb into a swimming pool. Right on the surface, the water feels hard, which is why you can hear such a big noise when you land. That's because of surface tension. All the molecules on top are pulled tightly together. They form a skin like a weak layer of plastic wrap. Here's a cool way of showing how surface tension works. Put some milk into a bowl, make sure it's a room temperature. Now squeeze a few drops of food colouring. It just sits there because it hasn't broken the surface tension. But watch this. A couple of drops of detergent splits up the molecules in the middle and all the colours are sucked towards the edges. That's what happens when you break surface tension. Spray bottles are amazing things. Wonder how they work. Oh, hope no one saw that. I know there's a tube inside there, a bit like this straw. It must suck the water up. 
Maybe I can make one myself. If I cut a slit in this straw, down there, bend it down into the water, then blow hard. It's working! By blowing across the top, I must be sucking the water up the straw. Then it squirts out the front. No chance of hitting myself now. Oh, by the way, the straw's no good afterwards. I don't even think about it, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> now I wonder how they're getting on with that oily operation cleaner. Lots of things in Dad's garage. Surely something here will clean up the oil. I wonder if this will work. That's stupid. They're just pushing the oil around. Oh, no good. It slides off. What about if we try and scoop it up with a piece of fly screen? Surely these cotton balls will soak it up. Who are these guys kidding? The oil might get into the cotton. This oil is tricky stuff. What can we use to soak it up? <laughs> Researchers are looking for the best way to clean up oil spills in the ocean. Here they're testing birds' feathers as a way to soak up the oil. On land, high-pressure hoses have been used to blast it off rocks. And they even use microscopic organisms that love eating oil. Scrubbing rocks, what a tough way to keep the water clean. But it's important because you never know what or who is down there. Have you ever wanted to command your own underwater vessel? Well, shipmates, here's how you do it. First of all, you'll need an old drink bottle, a big one. Then a pen cap and some modelling clay. Get the pen lid and stick the clay at the end of the point on the cap. That's your submarine. Then fill up the bottle with water right to the very top. Take the submarine and slowly, I mean slowly, put it into the water, catching a bubble inside. If it sinks, take some of the clay off. If it's too floaty, add some more. The sub should just barely float. Next, put the lid on the bottle. Now for the fun bit. Make the submarine dive and surface at your command. Squeeze the bottle hard and you're in dive mode. Stop squeezing and up she comes. With a little practice, you can even get it to stop right in the middle. It works because when you squeeze the bottle, the bubble in the submarine gets squashed. That lets in more water, the sub gets heavier and it sinks. When you stop squeezing, the bubble gets bigger. The sub gets lighter and heads to the top. Fish use the same principle to float up and down in the water without much effort. They have a small gas-filled sac inside their bodies called a swim bladder. Unfortunately, people don't have one. James has a new game, cover up the cola. I can't tell what's inside. This could be diet cola. I hate diet. But how can I tell which is diet and which is regular? They look the same, feel the same, they even smell the same. Thirsty yet? Want me to show you how? Fill up a bucket with water. Drop in the cans. And wait for the answer. 
one floats, one sinks, and I know which is which. The can that sank is regular coal. The sugar particles are packed in, making it heavier. The one that floated is diet, no sugar particles. So there you have it, regular sinks. I wonder if it stays down there forever. It's thirsty work, this science. <laughs> okay, we've tried cardboard, fly screen and cotton wool, but nothing has worked. We can't soak up the oil in the fish tank. What about this? Mum's old stockings. Hey, hey, hey! It's working! Globs of oil are getting soaked up into the stocking. Oh, at last they're getting somewhere. Nylon is made of similar stuff to oil, so they stick together. Look how much I've soaked up! Hmm, not bad! And I thought of another way to do this. Oil and water don't mix, they just float on the surface. If we get a container, put some weight in the bottom, we should be able to skim the oil right off the top. Look at that, we've done it! Whichever way we do it, at least my fish can eat again. Great, it's about time. Now get that big walrus away from us before he does it again. Today, stunt driver Evil Schnevel and his team are attempting a new world record. It's for eggs jumping a line of cars. The rules say they have to make the distance and survive. There's two dozen brave test pilots willing to try. I didn't sign up for this. Good luck, little guy. Oh, why me? We can't fail. We've got the right car, the right driver. No, you don't. Here we go. Help! Ouch! The jump's fine. We've got to work out a way to make a safe landing. Call an ambulance! How can we make our cars safer for the other drivers? We've got to protect them. Yes, protect them! Maybe something to cushion them. You can't make me! Okay, maybe you can! <laughs> oh, I did it for science. I think it's time to use our heads. Hang on, I'll be right back. Hey! <laughs> Safety testing cars started out as a dangerous business. Sometimes they'd use a brave driver willing to deliberately crash. Talk about a tough job. These days, no one needs to take that chance. Automatic crash test dummies show researchers in amazing detail what can happen to us in an accident and how to make cars safer. Man, remind me not to sign up as a crash test dummy. You have to be made of rubber. But you'd be surprised at how stretchy your body really is. Come on, sis. I want to measure how tall you are first thing in the morning. We'll mark it up on this piece of paper because we'll need it again later. Okay, that's you just there. Now, do me. Okay, now draw where you think you'll be this afternoon. Taller or shorter? You think you'll be taller, hey? I don't. She can't believe I think I'll shrink. After all, kids grow up, don't they? 
We'll see who's right after school. Mum's always buying white flowers, but I really prefer bright colours. I've got an idea to give them a bit of zing. If I put the flowers into glasses of water and add some food colouring, now I'll let nature do its work for an hour or two. It worked! Check out the change! No more boring white. It works because inside plants there are thin tubes, just like a straw. As water evaporates from the leaves and flowers, the tubes suck fresh water and the dye from the stem. I've got another idea that'll really blow our mind. What if I split the stem and put each half in a different colour? Talk about a split personality. Neat, eh? Now that's what I call a flower arrangement. How come you never give me flowers, Jason? Well, let me see. First of all, because... Okay, I... okay, okay. Let's see how our sun drivers are getting on trying to save those poor eggs. I reckon we can save our egg test pilots a headache. Hey, mini helmet! Maybe if I put some cotton wool inside, it will soften the blow. Hey, not bad. How am I looking? That's much better. Here we go, helmet man. Yeehaw! Ouch! His head's okay. Well, we forgot about his. Well, other end. Got a band aid? He must be bouncing around inside the car. What we need is something to keep him steady. Something like a car's seatbelt. Now, this is more like it. This ought to stop him crashing forward into the steering wheel. Hmm. Okay, he's all strapped in and helmeted off. Good luck, little guy. I hope this works. Every year, cars get safer and safer. But banging up a new car every time you want to check a new feature is expensive. So researchers are using computers more and more to find out the effects of a crash. They're even making computer models of what happens inside people to help car makers protect us more. Hey, don't throw that drink can away! Watch this, I'll make it roll without even touching it. To power it up, you'll need a balloon and... <laughs> give it a good rub on yourself or anyone else's. Now, hold the balloon a little bit in front of the can. The can will start to roll all by itself. Hey, let me try. It's called static electricity. Nice handy, John. Okay, this is it, the big measuring moment. When we marked our heights this morning, Priscilla was this tall. But she thought she'd be a bit taller now. I, on the other hand, reckoned I'll shrunk a bit. Well, let's find out. And I think you're in for a shock. You're shorter. You've got one thing. Gravity. Everyone has a backbone, which is made up of smaller bones called vertebrae, stacked one on top of the other. At night, when we're asleep, we lie down and the vertebrae stretch out a little. But during the day, when we're standing up, gravity squeezes the bones together. So, everyone should get a bit shorter. I think you'll find that was my prediction. 
So, if you're going to try out for the basketball team, better see the coach first thing in the morning. Hi boss, you're just in time to try something out for me. Try what out? I'm supposed to be going snorkeling. This test. All you have to do is touch and circle the coconut about a dozen times. Round and round like this. Then pick it up and see if you can follow that line straight to the bucket and drop in the coconut. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Right. Now pick it up. Whoops a daisy. <laughs> then straight along the line. Oh no, he's gone way off track. When Boss spins, the fluid in his inner ear, which controls our balance, spins too. When he stops, the fluid keeps spinning for a little while longer. So your ears are telling your brain you're still spinning, but your eyes are sending a message that you've stopped. Hey boss, before you go for that swim, won't you be needing these? You'll be right in a minute, or is that left? That Jen, she's so great. I've got to show her how I feel. Hey Jen, can you help me make a stethoscope? I've got a bottle, some modelling clay and some tubing. Okay, so you cut the top off the bottle. Wrap two bits of tube with clay. And jam it into the bottle's mouth. Incredible! A stethoscope! It makes quiet sounds louder. If you put the bottle against my chest, I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Hmm, nothing, eh? I know how to make it louder. I'll do some exercise. My muscles will use more oxygen. My heart starts pumping harder and faster. Pretty loud, huh? At last, she knows what's in my heart. Well, a beating heart is better than beating eggs. I wonder if our egg in a seatbelt survives with great leaps. We've given him a seatbelt and a crash helmet. I hope he'll be okay. I hope he works. Yes, we did it! Cray! Hey, now let's try going higher. This will be great, they'll fly a mile. Let's give our eggs a bit more protection. I'm going to make an airbag. So, he's got a helmet, a seatbelt to hold him tight, and an airbag to cushion the impact. I hope this works. You're a brave little guy. See you after the jump, darling. <laughs> now I can do it. Well, hello again. Can I sign an autograph for anyone out here? They did it. They made a safe car for crash testing eggs. I'm not exactly sure if it's that safe. We'd better get out of here before another egg bites the dust. See, See you next time, time on Backyard, Backyard Science. Science.